Howdy, I'm Angus, and welcome to not my shop today, but my laboratory. I've got a quick project to tackle, so let's get started. I recently got my first desktop PC since college, so I could start making videos for this channel. All of the horizontal spaces in my house are already occupied, so I needed to make a desk. I decided it would make for a more interesting video title to elicit clicks, that I would make it out of stuff I already had lying around, or things available for free. The plan is to build up a desk around this existing cabinet I inherited from my grandma's sewing room. In order to figure out how wide the desk should be, I had to establish one Angus wide as a standard of measurement. This feels like an imperial measurement, apologies for those looking for measurements in metric Anguses. I needed to be able to fit in the desk, and the depth and height were already determined by the free cabinet. I eventually did the smart thing and pushed in the chair that I'd be sitting in to make sure it had plenty of clearance. I measured that distance, then added a couple of inches to make it a nice round number that's easy to remember. Then I double-checked the overall size of the desk to make sure I could still access the stuff on the other side, and to make sure I had something for a top that would fit it. Here I have selected a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF and the remnants of this long sheet of half-inch construction-grade plywood. I want to cut the plywood to the same width as the MDF, so instead of measuring it, I just traced it and slid it across. I'm kind of stretching my own arbitrary rules here because I already had a piece of MDF that just happened to be the exact depth of the cabinet, 19 inches, and I held onto this remnant of plywood from another project. It still found materials if I found it in my shop. The MDF will act like an extension wing to the cabinet, and the plywood will be glued on top to bridge the gap across the two, giving all of the components some structure. I didn't bother clamping down a straight edge and just cut this freehand. I have a secret weapon later on to make sure these two pieces will match perfectly after I glue all the parts together. To make the legs, I grabbed the gnarliest 2x4 I had. This was used construction lumber, plain and simple. I measured the length to make sure I could get at least two legs out of it, plus a little extra margin for safety. This particular 2x4 was part of a kitchen island I helped tear out for a friend, so it had at least a pair of nails every 16 inches. Since this was still faster and cheaper than leaving my house, I grabbed the old 24 ounce hammer and got to work pounding out the nails. So, I've never seen this before. But the nail I just dropped fell right here and landed straight up and down and embedded itself into the floor. I've never liked the way 2x4 lumber looks with the rounded corners, so I decided to rip this down to get nice square edges. By the way, if you haven't seen my video yet on why I only raised the saw blade just above the wood I'm cutting, check out my catalog of videos. In a moment here, I notice there's a nail I missed. It's a good reminder to always be paying attention and present in the shop, whether you're working with reclaimed or brand new materials. No biggie, it just turned off the saw and pulled it out, but it sets the stage for an important reminder about safety. In a moment, watch for the head of the nail when it breaks off and goes flying. I didn't even see it happen, so there's no way human reflexes would be enough if it came towards my face. Make sure you're wearing eye protection, even when using hand tools. I sent it through the planer a couple of times just to clean up the faces. I left the holes for character, but if they bother you, you could plug them with some dowels and glue. The planer is one of my favorite tools because it removes the ugly surface of the wood and lets us see down to the beauty underneath. Maybe the world would be better if only we could do that with people. Well, ne never mind. That makes me sound like a serial killer. Just enjoy the woodworking. Now to turn that 2x4 into legs, first I check my measurements. I cut off the end to make it square, and then I measure just a little longer. This will give me some to cut off to level these legs later. Forget how a pencil works. Line up the cut, and let her rip. Or, sorry, cross cut. To make both legs the same size, I just use the first leg to measure the second one. Line up the cut, and rinse and repeat. I decided I should make some triangle braces to strengthen the connection to the tabletop. This is poplar that was reclaimed from a barn. I used a speed square, which ironically is shaped like a triangle, to draw out the layout lines. It was a little tedious because in between each cut I had to move my saw from 45 degrees back to 90 degrees every time. But in the end I ended up with four relatively uniform buttresses. Also, I get to say buttresses. 
To attach the legs to the desktop, I'm going for the internet's favorite guilty pleasure, pocket holes. It seems like every YouTube woodworker has to pick team pocket holes or team joinery, but since this is essentially shop furniture, I wasn't going to bother cutting a mortise and tenon. I set the MDF on top of the plywood so I could mark where to apply the wood glue. I didn't want too much glue going over on top of the cabinet. Then I just poured on a generous serving of wood glue, and I placed the MDF back on top of the plywood and made sure they were relatively lined up. The wood glue will be more than strong enough to hold, but I wanted to bust out Shoot a McNail Gun and put a few brad nails in place to keep the pieces from sliding while the glue dried. I loosely placed the top on the cabinet and marked where I could trim the end off. Quick public service announcement to anybody else who has a yellow brand saw. When your light starts blinking like this, it means your battery is dying. I made sure to countersink these holes so that the screws wouldn't interfere with the drawers. I reattached the legs with the pocket holes. And then I gracefully maneuvered the desk back upright. This is the same poplar from earlier. I'll just measure it in place to make the stretcher. I measured and made a mark where the center point of the stretcher would go, just to make sure it was parallel with the top. To level the desk, I measured from the desktop to the bottom of the cabinet and transferred that measurement onto the legs. And then I was interrupted. Time to get back to work. After taking the legs off again, I could take them over to the miter saw and cut them to their final length. For the top, I'm using laminate flooring. If you ask for a sample, most store's clerks can't be bothered to take it back to a saw and cut it. This is a tongue and groove style that clicks together. I smeared down the adhesive and used the disposable notch scraper until everything looked even. I'm not sure if there is a right way to do this, but there's no reason to start doing things the right way this late in the project. I put the laminate in place and then made a stack of heavy things to work as gravity clamps. Here I'm just marking out roughly where I can trim the top. Again, these cuts don't have to be perfect. We're almost at the point where I can deploy that secret weapon. This is a flush trim router bit. The bearing will follow along the edge of the MDF and cabinet, making all of those edges perfectly straight and flush. Nice and smooth, all the way around. It may be smooth, but with the layers it's a little ugly, even for this project. Let's see if we can cover that up. For the hardwood edge banding, I'm going to be using this. Solid oak. This is actually oak flooring. A friend of mine happened to be renovating their house, and they had some of this in their dumpster, and I asked pretty please if I could have some of it. Most wood flooring is also tongue and groove so I had to rip down both edges to width. Then I ran it through the planer to admire that surface finish on the bottom. Set my miter saw to 45 degrees and cut them all to length. Then with a little bit of glue and brad nails, stuck them in place. I repeated the process on all four sides. And then used a 45 degree chamfer bit to soften the edges. Since this is oak, I wiped on a little bit of shellac. I used a Minwax stain on the legs and stretcher. This color is called Gunstock. I just want to take a moment to appreciate how beautiful the grain pattern on this poplar came out. It's almost a shame it's going to be hidden under a desk. Then I hit the legs with some spray lacquer outside before final assembly.
Now, obviously there's no way I would or even could make plans for this because nobody will ever build this desk again. But hopefully something in this video gave you an idea of how you can upcycle, recycle, refurbish, or just make something new from scratch. Thanks for watching my video so far. Here's where I ask you to click all those YouTube buttons. And if something in this video inspired you to make something of your own, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. Check back in for more videos to come, and until the next one, have a great day being crafty. So here you can see where the desk sits. It's between this desk that I got from Ikea, and this one that was handmade about 110 years ago and survived two world wars. I just think it's kind of apropos that this desk is somewhere in the middle, but a lot closer to this one.